Le Chatelier's principle states that if you change the conditions of a reaction when it is in equilibrium, the reaction is going to respond by attempting to reverse whatever change you made, or at least try to minimize whatever change you made. These changes that we make to a reaction in equilibrium are known as stresses. Changing the conditions of a reaction in equilibrium is often referred to as applying stress. There are three common types of stresses that we can apply to a system that is in equilibrium. The most common type is adding or removing uh, some of the reactants or products. Um, if we're removing reactant or product, it is important to note that we don't want to remove it completely. We just want to take a little bit of it away. Um, adding, of course, we can add as much as we want. Second type of stress, this one only applies if we have gas molecules present. This is changing the pressure of the system or changing the volume of the system. And again, only when we have gases. Uh, the reaction doesn't have to be 100% gas phase, just have to have some gas molecules present somewhere. And then last but not least, changing the temperature of the reaction is another common type of stress. So either increasing or decreasing the temperature. In this video, I'm gonna go through all three of these different types of stresses, give you some examples of each and explain how the system responds to attempt to reverse these different types of stresses. And we're gonna be starting with adding or removing reactant or product. For this, we're gonna be using this as our example a system that's in equilibrium. I have written the equilibrium expression down here because we are going to want to refer to it. Uh, keep in mind that pure liquids and pure solids left out of the equilibrium expression so they don't appear down here. And here are just three different types of examples of adding or removing reactants or products, starting with adding NaHSO4. NaHSO4 is one of our reactants. If we add, uh, maybe we just have a bottle of this handy, we just dump a whole bunch of a whole bunch more of this molecule into the system when it is in equilibrium, increasing the amount of just this one single molecule is going to disrupt the equilibrium of the whole system overall. Remember that when we're in equilibrium, we have this perfect balance of all three of these chemicals. If we increase the amount of just one of them, we no longer have that perfect balance anymore. And by adding NaHSO4, we throw off this perfect balance. So by increasing the amount of NaHSO4, the system is gonna respond by trying to get rid of it, get rid of the extra NaHSO4 that you have added. And it's going to do that by increasing the rate of the reaction that proceeds from left to right. It's trying to use up the extra stuff that was put into the system. We refer to this type of response as a shift to the right. And when we say shift to the right, we uh, obviously the right part means that we are moving from left to right. Shifting to the right just simply means that we are increasing the rate of the reaction that proceeds from the left to the right. So we're speeding this reaction up a little bit in an attempt to get rid of the extra NaHSO4. This is gonna be true anytime we add any reactant to any equation. Uh, in equilibrium. Anytime we add a reactant, it's always going to respond by shifting to the right. Situation number two, we are adding H3O+. Uh, again, if we add just H3O+, we're increasing the concentration of just this one thing, and that's going to disrupt the perfect balance of all three of these chemicals. It won't be in equilibrium anymore. If we add some H3O+, the system is going to respond by trying to get rid of the H3O+, that we added. To get rid of the H3O+, it's going to speed up the rate of the reaction that moves from right to left. It wants to try to use up the extra H3O+. This is referred to as a shift to the left. And again, this is true whenever we add any product. And we can make a, make a note up here, the first one, anytime we add any reactant, we're going to get a shift to the right. Situation number three, what if we remove some of the NaSO4 minus? So NaSO4 minus is a product. And in this situation, we're considering if we take some of it away. There's a few different ways that we could actually remove a little bit one of the, a little bit of one of the products. Um, so we've used one of these methods and we've removed a little bit of one of the products in this reaction. How is the system going to respond? We've disrupted the perfect balance of NaSO4 
it's going to respond by trying to put back what we took away. So it's going to shift from left to right, trying to increase the amount of NaSO4 minus, trying to bring that amount back up to the concentration that it should be. This, because we are shifting or increasing the rate of the reaction that's proceeding to the right, from left to right, we refer to this also as a shift to the right. And this will always be true anytime we remove any product molecule. So if we remove any product, we're always gonna get a shift to the right. Likewise, if we're, we were to remove a reactant, we're gonna get a shift to the left. Situation number four, what if we were to remove some of the water? Uh, I just said, if we remove a reactant, it's going to shift to the left. However, in this particular situation, removing water causes no change at all. Why might that be the case? Well, that is the case because water is not present in the equilibrium expression, meaning that the amount of water in this system doesn't have any bearing on the equilibrium concentrations. So removing water or adding water or whatever, because it's not present in the equilibrium expression anywhere, it doesn't have any effect on the equilibrium. So this is actually not a stress. Kind of a trick question. Let's take a look at changing the volume or the pressure of a gas. For this particular situation, we're gonna be considering this reaction here that has two molecules in the gas phase. And we're gonna be looking at both increasing and decreasing the pressure and increasing and decreasing the volume. Now, when we're talking about increasing or decreasing pressure or volume, we really wanna be thinking about um, what, the, what the reaction looks like, like kind of imagining um, the gas molecules inside this container. If we increase the pressure in any gas phase reaction, the system is always going to respond by shifting to the side that has the fewest gas molecules. The reason that it's doing this is to try to decrease the pressure that you have increased. Pressure is um, caused not only by the force of the collisions of the gas molecules inside their container, but also pressure is caused by the frequency of the collisions of the gas molecules in the container. So if you decrease the number of gas molecules, you are ultimately going to decrease the pressure. So if we have increased the pressure of our system, the system is going to respond by trying to decrease the pressure back down to what it was, and it will do that by shifting to the side that has the fewest gases. To determine which side has the most or the fewest gases, we're just simply looking at the stoichiometric coefficients for each one of the gases in the reaction. On the reactant side, we have one mole of CO2 gas, and on the product side, we have two moles of CO gas. So the reactant side is the side with the fewest gases. For this particular reaction, it would shift to the left. I do want to point out to you though that shifting to the left is unique to this particular reaction. Shifting to the side with the fewest gas molecules is information that you can take and apply to any reaction. Shifting to the left may not always be the case, it depends on your reaction. If we decrease the pressure, if we um, stress it out by decreasing the pressure, it's going to respond by trying to increase the pressure and that means that it's going to shift to the side that has the most gases. For this particular reaction, the right side has two gas molecules versus one on the left. So for this particular reaction, it's going to shift to the right. But again, that's not always gonna be the case. If we increase the volume of the container of this, of this particular system, that is exactly the same or has the same effect as decreasing the pressure. Increasing the volume causes the pressure to decrease and it's going to respond by shifting to the side that has the most gas molecules present. So increasing the volume just has the same ultimate effect as decreasing the pressure. And if we decrease the volume, that is the same as, or that ultimately causes the pressure to increase. So decreasing the volume causes an increase in the pressure. And if we increase the pressure, then that means that it is going to respond by shifting to the side that has the fewest gas molecules.
So if we increase the pressure, we're gonna get this response right here. Hopefully all of these arrows are drawing are making sense. Now, the last thing that we're considering is changing the temperature. For this one, I have given this example of uh, this particular reaction, and in order for us to make predictions about the effect of temperature, we need to know a little bit about the enthalpy of the reaction. We don't have to know a ton, we just really specifically need to know if it's exothermic or endothermic. So here I'm telling you that this reaction has a positive delta H, which means that it is endothermic. Now you're going to have to remember what it means to be endothermic versus exothermic. If a reaction is endothermic, that means that heat is absorbed by the reaction. In which case, we want to think about heat as if it is a reactant. In order for this reaction to work, heat has to be absorbed um, before the reaction can proceed. If this reaction had a negative delta H and it was exothermic, that means that heat is released by the reaction. In that case, we would want to think of heat as a product. So when we're thinking about the effect of temperature, we want to imagine where heat belongs in this chemical reaction. Does it belong on the reactant side or does it belong over on the product side? That's half of the puzzle. Once we get that figured out, the rest of it is pretty easy. If we increase the temperature of this particular reaction, that has the same effect as increasing any one of the reactants. Increasing any one of the reactants is going to cause the reaction to shift from left to right. So in this particular, in this particular reaction, the response is going to be to shift to the, to the right. But that is only the case if the reaction is endothermic. If the reaction was exothermic, we would see a shift to the left. And again, the reason for that, uh, if it was exothermic, we would have heat as a product of the reaction. If we increased heat, it would shift to the left to get away from the heat. If we decrease the temperature at this particular reaction, if we remove some of the heat, it's going to respond the same way it would if we removed a reactant. It's going to cause it to shift to the left. And again, this is only the case if it is endothermic. If the reaction was instead exothermic and we decreased the temperature, it would shift to the right to attempt to raise the temperature back up again. So shift to the right if it is exothermic. 